What's up, YouTubes? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. My name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about data. So a couple weeks ago, I did a video called Why You Shouldn't Become a Data Scientist. And I really tried to stress in that video that if you're trying to get into the data science world, if you don't know what you're getting yourself into, your expectations aren't aligned with reality, you're probably setting yourself up for failure. But if you missed that video, the link will be in the description. But I did try to stress in that video that I really enjoy the data science world. I've enjoyed every single data science job that I've personally worked in. I have found every single one of them a little bit different, but they've all been enriching in their own individual way. So I wanna do like a part two to that video where I detail what the real perks and benefits of being a data scientist really are. Because let's face it, the field is white hot right now, and there's no way that the field would be this booming if people in it didn't genuinely really enjoy the work. So as usual, these are gonna be based on my own personal experience. They're also augmented by anecdotes from people that I keep in my network, as well as research that I've done. Naturally, every single job is different, but I really think the chance of these things being true is gonna be much higher in data science than it typically is gonna be in other fields. So before we get into things, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. So perk number one of being a data scientist, and you all probably guessed this one, it's money. So this one is pretty straightforward, and honestly, I have talked about it on this channel before, but the money really is outstanding. There's tons of metrics out there on this, but here's a couple of the ones that I personally find the most impressive. In 2018, Birch Works did a study on this. They found the median starting salary for a data scientist is $95,000. Now granted, that is a starting salary. That's not factoring in years of experience. You work your way up, you get raises, you move up. None of that, that is a starting salary. Glassdoor, at the time I'm recording this video, which is December of 2019, they're reporting the average base pay of a data scientist to be $120,495. So obviously, there are a lot of factors that go into this. Namely, what sector are you in? Are you in the private sector? Are you in the public sector? Or are you in a startup? So startups generally pay the highest, followed by any other private sector job, followed by the public sector. If you're in the United States, the two regions of the country which are gonna pay the highest are the East Coast, particularly the New York City, Boston area, and then also the Bay Area. They are generally gonna pay higher than the middle of the country is. And then naturally, years of experience matter. As you work your way up, you're gonna get raises but you also have tons of opportunities as well to leave your job, go somewhere else, and make even more money. The second perk is that it's a very creative field. And now this one is a little bit subjective, but I think for the vast majority of people, they get really bored if they're doing the exact same thing day in and day out. I know it's definitely the case for me, and if I'm not learning and constantly pushing the boundaries for myself, I'm going to get bored and I'm gonna get restless really quickly. The thing is, data science is by its very nature a very creative field because you generally work on very open-ended problems of which there's not just one way to skin the cat. There's always different ways that you can attack a problem, so you have to critically examine what is the best solution for your given problem. Now that should, in and of itself, keep you doing different things a lot of the time because honestly the field is so broad there's so many different techniques out there and there's so many different things out there to explore you should inside the capacity of your job get the opportunity to explore a lot of different things and if your job unfortunately doesn't provide those opportunities it's really easy to leave your job and go somewhere else that is going to allow you to explore and learn the things that you want to. Which brings me to perk number three, which is career opportunities. 
So there's definitely a lot of jobs out there which could seem like dead ends. You can stay in them for several years, you work your way up, but it's really difficult to see where to go next and people end up stuck in there and having to make lateral career moves. That is definitely not the case with data science. In fact, there's tons of flexibility to move up to exactly where you want to go as an individual. It's common for people to work their way up to positions like a senior or principal data scientist, and that's typically still kind of a technical role. And people can stay in a technical role if they want to. A lot of people end up transitioning out of doing the technical stuff from day to day. And I think the reason for that is because communication in data science is such a big part of the job. You're flexing your soft skill muscles so much that transitioning to things like managerial, directorial, or even leading small teams, those types of positions are not that much of a far cry away. Naturally, say if you're in the Midwest and you want to transition to things like big tech or the FANG, that is Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, those kinds of positions are always options for you as well if you're actually interested in them. Perk number four, you get to keep up with industry trends. And now this one is a little interesting. I actually put it in my video why you shouldn't be a data scientist as a negative. And the reason I did that is because I get it. It's overwhelming at times. There's tons of stuff out there that you constantly have to keep learning and the learning doesn't stop after college. You have to continuously keep going. It doesn't stop. That can really suck sometimes. I get it. However, the flip side of this is that you're very unlikely to get completely steamrolled by new technology. Because let's face it, change in the industry generally happens pretty slowly. So let's say 10 years from now, the big thing everybody's using is Julia. Maybe everybody's working in Hadoop environments. You get the opportunity to see this happening very slowly, pay attention to what's going on out there, and then adapt yourself. So what this will lead to is really good job security. Because let's face it, the notion of having a job permanently is kind of a myth in this day and age. Having security in any one job is probably not necessarily gonna be something that you can count on. But if you have skills which are highly valuable in the marketplace, you are never ever going to have trouble getting hired. Number five, and this one is huge, is there's very low risk of your job getting automated in the future. Now there's a lot of talk out there right now about automation and what that's going to look like in the 2020s decade. And honestly, this one is up for a little bit of debate even in the data science world. Because even today, we're seeing things like simpler tasks, simpler analytics getting automated, and even things like building models. There are tools out there which make that process significantly quicker and easier. At the end of the day though, data science has way too much of a soft skills component intertwined with it though. So there is absolutely no way that we're going to be able to automate away knowing the right question to ask from a business perspective having all the domain knowledge that's necessary to ask the right question, perform all the necessary data science steps in a pipeline, interpret results and visualizations in a way that stakeholders can readily comprehend. I just don't see any of that happening anytime soon. Now something that I do think is true is that data science in five to 10 years is going to look drastically different than what it looks like now. So there's gonna be all kinds of different products and services that get released over the next period of time, and it's just going to make our lives easier. You're probably going to see more easy and menial tasks getting automated, and that's just going to open up more of our time and our attention to where we can focus on bigger and better and more exciting things. Who knows, we're probably gonna be the ones automating away a lot of the things in the world. Think about that one for a minute. So overall, the field of data science is fantastic. I found it actually by accident, and I'll make a video on this in the future, but I found it and I've never looked back. Like anything though, there are a lot of trade-offs. There are positives and there are negatives, so it's on you to get all of the relevant information for you and make the right decision for you. So thanks for watching this video. Until next time, Richard, 
on data.